supporting. Okay. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Hi. Kind of early evening, late afternoon. Um, I want to welcome you all to our uh, caregiving community here in Israel and uh, commend you for being so brave and coming and uh, being part of our uh, community here to take care of all of our needy people. It's not everyone that can do this job. So again, I thank you for doing that. And um, I'll just say that um, uh, Margareta and Anat and I have prepared um, a few days of um, kind of lectures, talks about different issues that you may encounter. Um, today's subject that I want to talk about. Sarah, we can't hear you. You're on mute. We could not hear you for uh, the last few seconds. Um, I had a, um, can you hear me now? I'm not, now we can't hear you. I see, I'm sorry. Yes, it's perfect now. And uh, the last thing we heard you saying is that um, Margarita, you Wait. and Anas. Okay, so let's uh, start again. program. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank, you. thank you. Um, so, I think everybody that has raised their hand has to cancel the hand raising because I can't share a screen while there is a hand being raised. Okay, so can we do that? Everybody cancel their hand raising. And now I would like to share a screen and one minute, please. See that it works now. Now full screen. Okay. Uh, perfect. Can, okay, now you see me? Yes, it's perfect. Okay, one minute. Um, In the meantime, everyone, please put yourself on mute unless you like to say something. I see that there are 23 participants. No, 20. 20, okay. Mm. One minute. Yeah. Uh, I kind of lost two people on there, so I don't know what. Wait a minute. Something here is not. Okay, so can everyone hear and see me? Yes. Okay, very good. Um, well, so um, I'll just say about myself that I'm Sarah and I'm a um, retired uh, geriatric social worker and I worked for many years in the caregiving um, uh, procedures of, um, of Israel and I, um, I want to talk to you about values and culture. Um, excuse me for one minute, Anat 
לרגע נעלם לי התמונה של כל החבר'ה ושלכם. זה נכון. זה, זה... את יכולה בצד, את רואה <אח> בעצם שורה כזו, לא שורה, איזו חלונית, sorry everyone, it's technical explanation, um, <אח> את רואה באיזשהו... או oh, הנה, מה לי אתם בחזרות? כן, כן, מצאתי אתכם, יופי, אני אוהבת לראות עם מי אני מדברת. כן, כן, פנים. אוקיי, אני באק. So um, I, as again, I'm a geriatric social worker, have, um, have been for many, many years, and um, I'm going to share this uh, presentation that's been prepared for us, and um, we're going to talk, I'm going to talk about the things that are on the screen for the next uh, half hour or so, and then we're going to have a five-minute break, and I will continue about other subjects related. And basically the purpose of our doing this, um, this video conference, so to speak, is um, for you, number one, to feel that and to know that we are here for you. We care about the caregivers here at CIMI. And also it's very important to have a, um, you know, like a, a, so not a, 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 um, a community of caregivers. And we want to encourage you to um, share with each other and to get to know each other. And, um, and this is the only means that we have to do it <laughs> is by this Zoom uh, conference that we're trying to share with all of you. So I will ask for your comments and response and questions and so on. And I would, you know, I would appreciate it. And I think it would be good for everyone. If you shared with each other experiences, questions, and doubts, and whatever it is that you're thinking about and fearing. And uh, hopefully we can help each other, you know, your friends and us um, here and see me, Anat and I, um, will, are, you know, willing to answer your questions and relate to anything that's on your mind. So the subject for now is culture and values in the relationship with the elderly patient. And we assume that most of your Uh, clients or patients are elderly disabled individuals. And so that's how we geared this presentation. So what are the basic values in caregiving work? Well, I think values are for most of us probably pretty much universal. And so I'm going to speak about them um, in a little bit more detail. We want to talk about human dignity, autonomy, tolerance, empathy, compassion, and care. Okay, um, what do these values mean in caregiving work? I'll just say in general that, you know, the basic tools of our caregiving work is our personality. And the more um, attuned we become, the more sensitive, the more, um, you know, um, Active we are in understanding our surroundings, ourselves, and our clients, I think the more tools we have in our toolbox as professional caregivers. And that is basically our goal, okay, as professional caregivers to fine tune ourselves, okay? And so how do we do that? We'll talk about human dignity, value that refers to a person's unique qualities as a person. Dignity is the right of a person to be valued and respected for their own sake and to be treated ethically. Respect your patient's humanity, privacy, thoughts, feelings, opinions, beliefs, and his body. Maintain your patient's privacy and his dignity. So this is kind of, you know, a generalized statement, but if we try to think of it in terms of everyday life, I think that, you know, you're entering a person's home. This is his safe place. He's at the lowest part of his life. You're doing a, you know, a very honorable thing by um, presenting yourself as assisting him in the most difficult part of his life cycle. And you're going to be there to help him which is a very noble deed. On the other hand, you're a stranger, you're entering his you know, private space, his safe place, his, you know, where he feels the most um, secure. And here's a stranger that looks different, smells different, acts different, speaks different. 
And that's kind of threatening. I would say a lot threatening. As much as you're anxious and tense about being in a strange place with strangers, away from your home, away from your comfort zone, they're also feeling the same way. So you must be minded about this special tension that's in the atmosphere. And I, I want to say that, you know, hang on, I'm going too fast. Am I going backwards? Yes. Um, you know, you must be minded that this is how your, you know, your client or your, your patient is feeling as well. So the first thing I suggest is to smile. Smile is very easy, but we forget sometimes. <laughs> and when we're anxious and tense, it really, it, it, it really is something that, you know, can open up a heart and, and make the way easier to get to know people, okay? So this is a process that you must be minded, okay? If they don't smile, it's because they're also anxious and tense. So this is their safe place and you want to respect everything about it, okay? I just wanna mention a few things that may seem trivial, but even so are very important, okay? You're gonna be um, asking where you're going to sleep or you're going to put your things, where you're going to, you know, spend the day, what your routine is, what are, is expected of you, write things down. It, you know, it's all different and strange and you're going to make mistakes and that's fine. Everybody makes mistakes, but you have to um, respect your patient's privacy and you're going to be in, in the very intimate situation with him. Obviously, you're going to be bathing and feeding him, clothing him, you're going to be touching him. All of those, th all of those things with a stranger is, you know, um, it, it's a process of, of learning how to deal with someone. You have to be minded that perhaps you're younger, you're more, not perhaps, you're definitely younger, stronger, more energetic. And, you know, perhaps you can do things faster in a more efficient way, but you must be very, very tolerant and listen to the way they do things, okay? And do it at their pace and do it as they like it and do it their way until they trust you to do it a different way, no matter what it is, okay? Anything big and small. Don't move anything in the house, okay? If you move something, they look for it. Oh, she took it, it's gone. You know, you don't wanna, uh, <laughs> you don't wanna exacerbate any kind of suspicion that people usually have about strangers. And at this point, you're a stranger. So be very minded to be gentle and slow and pick up the rhythm of, of his life, okay? And kind of move into that, okay? Um, opinions, beliefs, thoughts, all of that's part of understanding and learning who your, who your, client, who your client, your patient, your employer is. Take the time, ask questions. Look at pictures in the house. Ask, where is this from? Where is that from? Who are these people? Look at family albums. Find out what was their life like before they became ill. Try to understand what were their triumphs, what were their hobbies, what they like to do, what they don't like to do. There may time, come a time where they won't be able to tell you those things. And it'll be very important that you know how to make them calm and relaxed and happy. And, and you know, all of those things are very important to take the time to learn them as quickly as possible because their situation may change, okay? And we wanna also think about a person's privacy, okay? Very important in terms of his space. And you must talk to people to, your, to the family, you must consider not just your client, but also his family, who are the important people that are taking care of him now, and you know, try to make contact with them. Very, very important to see it as a project that you're not alone in it. I assume that there are other people involved in the family. And for them, it's a new experience altogether. They may have had people coming into the home to do some cleaning or cooking, coming and going. But having someone stay in the home is a very different experience. Where are you supposed to sit when you have quiet time in the living room, watch television with them in your room? Can you sit outside? Can you sit inside? And the kitchen. The kitchen is a very important place for most Jewish families, 
but not just. Every woman likes her own kitchen, right? The way she's ready to do it and the way she's done it forever. So don't be insulted and don't be, you know, don't be put off if they ask you not to go in the kitchen at first until you learn how to do the things that the way they like to, it done. And um, yeah, and don't be offended. Okay, it takes time. It's a mutual kind of a dance. Two steps forward, one step backward, be patient. Autonomy. Autonomy is the capacity to make an informed, uncoerced decision, self-directing freedom, and especially moral independence. Give your patient the right to choose what he prefers to do, where he wants to go, and allow him to make his own decisions. Very important, okay? We don't want to be bossy, and we don't want to uh, appear to know better than them. Everybody knows what's good for them, and you're there to be a third hand a third foot, so to speak, and to allow them to do whatever it is that they need and want to do, you know, to, to facilitate that for them in an easier way, okay? Take the time to get to know. If you know that the, your client is not making, you know, and he's making an inappropriate decision, or, you know, middle of the night, he wants to go somewhere. Okay, that's a different situation. But if you are sure that it's not really terribly wrong, then you must allow him to do that. And if you're convinced it is something that's not, you know, proper, consult someone in the family, consult someone, you know, someone else um, before you interfere in the way that he wants things to be done, the way he wants to dress, what he wants to eat, when he wants to eat, where he wants to go, et cetera, et cetera. You must allow them to choose. You must understand that their life has become so, how should I say, so minimized. And the ability to make decisions about their life has become so uh, minimalized that the smallest of decision of how they want to eat their egg makes all the difference in the world if they can still choose that. Okay, so we must respect their ability to choose even the smallest things. Tolerance. Toleration is the allowing or permitting of acceptance of an action, idea, object, or a person which one can sometimes dislike or disagree with. Be tolerant of your patient and give yourself time to get to know each other, even if you don't agree with him sometimes, and always respect him. Okay, so, you know, you may be faced in situations where you're, you know, your employer is behaving inappropriately for some reason or other, perhaps it's related to his disease, perhaps it's related to other issues that are there. It doesn't mean that you have to, you know, persevere everything, but tolerance is trying to understand where it's coming from and being a professional is being able to know how to deal with certain situations. But definitely we don't want to make judgments, okay? Empathy. Empathy is the capacity to understand or feel what another person is experiencing from within his frame of reference. That is the capacity to place oneself in another's position. Defini definition of empathy encompasses a broad range of emotional states. Try to empathize with your patient's physical and emotional condition. Okay, this is a tall order, so to speak. We can, you know, if we know about a person's medical situation, then we can understand if he's in pain or if he's another discomfort and so on, we can empathize with that. If they're sad, obviously, but until you know the person and you understand the, his background and, you know, what his losses are, what his, all of the, you know, the more complex parts of his personality, I would say empathy is, you know, takes time to develop. Definitely something that we want to keep as a goal, right? We want to empathize with our patient, try to understand. And the more we know them, the more we get close to them, the more we understand, even without, you know, their verbalization, certain gestures, certain, you know, certain way that they transfer their, their, um, their emotions, we can pick up as, if we know them well enough, okay? But we do want to understand where it's coming from. You must understand that in Israel, people, you know, it's, I'm sure you know, it's a young country. It's a country of immigrants. People come to, 
have come to Israel from all different parts of the world, from Asia, Africa, uh, North America, South America, uh, you know, different cultures, different languages, different experiences. Most of Isra of elder Israeli people have immigrated from someplace. And for them, they can empathize with you being a stranger in a strange place, okay? Kind of a place to connect, okay? Compassion, okay? That's one of the key tools of our professional toolbox, I would say. Compassion, sympathetic pity and concern for the suffering or misfortune of others. Compassion motivates people to go out of their way and help physical, mental, or emotional patients, uh, <clears throat> emotional pains of another and themselves. Well, I assume that, you know, if you've chosen this, this job, this line of work, Compassion is probably part of your personality. I think that, you know, um, bus drivers and technicians and so on uh, really don't need uh, compassion for their work. But for our line of work, being caregivers, this is a key tool. And I assume that it's already part of your personality. Otherwise, perhaps you made a mistake in choosing this position. But I assume that you know that already. All of that is part of care, the provision of what is necessary for the health, welfare, and maintenance and protection of someone or some things. I'm talking about protection um, um, a little bit more in detail. You know, the family trusts us to keep their family member safe and not just his, you know, his body, but also, you know, all of his property. Basically, we are in charge, you know, making sure that nothing is broken, nothing is taken, nothing is, you know, compromised. And this is a big responsibility and it takes time to understand and to know how it must be managed, okay? And I'm assuming that you're going to have some kind of a schedule and you're going to be in charge of medication and, um, and perhaps uh, all kinds of you know, routine checks on, on the medical situation, on food situation and everything that's going on in the household. It takes time to learn all those things, especially because it's a different culture, different language, different cues you know, that people transfer between each other. Be very patient with yourself, okay? Be very patient and compassionate with yourself. I invite you to participate, everyone. What, in your opinion, is the most important value of caregiving work? Are there any other values that you believe that um, are important for caregiving work? If you have any comments or questions about anything that I've said, or even if I did, we didn't mention it yet, please voice your, you know, your thoughts and feelings. Has anyone worked abroad before that would like to share about an experience of working in a different country, a different culture? No brave ones? Come on. Somebody must be brave enough. Hey, Jana. I saw that you raised your hand. Yes, ma'am. Please, please talk. <laughs> um, before, I've been working in Singapore. I've been taking care of the two couple Chinese. Their age is about uh, 90 years old. Mm. And 95 years old couple. Normally, my patient, the male one, he had the uh, Alzheimer's. And the uh, woman is uh, just an old age. It's uh, very challenging because they don't know to speak in English. And I don't know also to speak in Pokken. Normally, the local dialect there is spoken as a Chinese. So it's a big challenge just for me because I don't know how to feed them, to give the medications, and I don't know how to 
to fool, let them follow whatever instructions that I need to give them. So who so, helped you? Yeah, they will help me normally. Was there someone in the family that did speak English that could help you? Before, yes, my mom, the daughter of my patients. But normally for the whole day, just three of us. Mm. But because uh, I learned a bit by bit those basic uh, language or just like for water, uh, it's time to eat like that. So I learned it. And then with the do some actions also. So I learned. So those patients uh, later on by month, I adjust, I learn a lot. Every time my employers come back home, so I always ask them, uh, what's the meaning of these things that at least next tomorrow I can, I can talk to my patients what I need to do. So thank God because later on, after two years, more than two years, uh, I learned and to communicate with my patients and I succeed because there's a lot of challenges by that time. Uh, by the time I learned to handle a patient with uh, uh, NGT, so they teach me how to feed the, the patient with NGT. It's a long story, but in short, uh, I recall, uh, I try my way and I suggest also to the daughter of my patient. So by that time, it's very challenging because they have a SARS issue in Singapore. I think not only in Singapore, it's around the world. Is about the year 2011. So we okay. are only stay in the hospital with my patient. So it's a long story, but thank, very thankful because until I finish my contract, my patient has recovery very well. He can do, he can walk, he can eat without NGT now. And then very strong mm -hmm. until I finish my contract, until I back home to Philippines. So I'm very proud because I survived. And the family is very happy to my service because I taking care of their parents very well. Wow, good for you, Jenna. Thank you for sharing that incredible yeah. story. So yes. yes, so you persevered all the challenges and you did a wonderful job and you're yes. very proud of you know of the work that you did and i commend you wow and yes. now you've, you've brought yourself into a situation with another challenge right yes. so you're going to learn a little bit of hebrew and um yeah this is going to be probably as challenging <laughs> but you already have the experience yeah in being in this kind of a situation. Wow, thank you. That That's yeah, an incredible welcome. story. So you're prepared. You're yeah, prepared. I'm already prepared <laughs> for the Alzheimer's patients. Well, not just for the Alzheimer. I think that might be the easiest part. I think, you know, just being in a different country, uh, not Chinese, not Philippine, Middle East, uh, you know, everything is different. Perhaps you've already started to learn Hebrew. Have you learned a little bit of Hebrew yet? Yeah, little oh, bit. <laughs> good for you. That's All very right. important. So I'm going to test you now. I'm <laughs> going to make a hand gesture. In Hebrew, we have a lot of, you know, we speak with a lot of body languages, very loud kind of, you know, uh, maybe not even so polite and we have a lot of hand gestures so we we do this have you seen this before and we say rega 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 yes. rega rega you kind of cup your fingers and you go like this and you say rega 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 how about everybody do that and i will explain what it means all right you've already learned something very important right you cup your fingers together and up and down 
and you say, rega, rega. You can do it with both hands. Let's say, rega, rega, rega. Roll their arms. Rega, rega, rega. Rega, rega, A minute, please. Rega is a minute. And so if you smile and you say, rega, rega, and then Thanks. everybody has to be patient with you. <laughs> but you should know that Israeli have their own time zone. And like, um, when you say rega, like just a second or just a minute, it's not necessarily a minute. It could be five <laughs> minutes. It could be 10 minutes. Rega, rega, rega. You're waiting for the cab to fill. It could be a half hour. You're waiting for yeah. the train. Like, it could when, be. when people tell you just a minute, you don't really know how long you're going to wait. <laughs> yeah. So this is a different kind of language in terms of time, <laughs> in terms of social codes. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So you know what? First of all, Joanna, thank you for sharing. And I'll just say that Yes, one of the things I didn't talk about, but I think is, uh, should be on the list, is perseverance, right? You know, you said you persevered, you, you, you made it through the difficult parts, and you found ways to deal with issues that you, you, know, you needed to deal with, and you stuck it out, and in the end, you were very proud, and the family was very happy, and did a good job, and you saw your contract all the way through, and that's really very commendable. Okay. Anyone else have a question or something they'd like to share? I have a question. <laughs> Go ahead. Joanna. <laughs> Joanna, yes. I am, I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, I, I'm not sure you said, maybe I missed it. How long have you been there? In Singapore? Sorry? How long have you been there uh -huh. with those, uh, with the couple? I've been there for more than two years. And the good news was when I come back last 2017, uh, sorry, 2015 for another employer, uh, I met again the daughter of my previous employer. Very nice. Thank you. So honestly, Thank you for sharing. I'm very yeah. much impressed. Anyone else like to share an experience or a question about, about experiences here or in abroad in another country? Please do. If I'm not mistaken, we have a caregiver here within Saudi Arabia, maybe? If I'm not mistaken, who learned Arabic? <laughs> maybe. Yeah? Maybe she's not here today. Maybe okay. she can join us. Hmm. Or she's just being shy. <laughs> okay. I will continue. So the next issue that I want to talk about is gender aspects and caregiving work. Do we have um, gentlemen with us in this group, Anat? Or are we just ladies? We have you, and I think so here, Joseph even joined us, and let me see if there's more. Uh, there's some names, uh, Vincent. Okay, so and, we're not uh, just ladies, but that's that, that's not important. Well, I just more. wanted to know. Yeah. But basically, what I want to say about uh, gender aspect and caregiving work um, is very important. First of all. I want you all to know that in Israel, uh, in terms of um, gender definition, I think we're a very tolerant country, you know, um, on a spectrum from men to women, we tend to think today that there is a spectrum of, you know, defined and undefined issues. But I think we have to keep in mind that our um, Employers are probably more traditional in the way that they're thinking and feeling and understanding things. And this is something important to be minded about. Um, but um, one of the things that we take very um, uh, seriously is any kind of um, abuse in terms of, um, you know, being 
in appropriately, how should I say it, approached or be or treated, okay, in terms of sexuality. And so uh, we do put this in as part of our agenda because we want you all to know that this is not part of the job. Uh, there's no tolerance for inappropriate behavior from your employer or anyone else in the family or anyone else in your surroundings. And this is something that um, we definitely uh, want you to understand, okay? So a few facts about gender care work, although most of the caregivers are women, there are also many men who are caregivers, especially when a, na a man needs to be cared for, but not necessarily. I think we all know that sometimes families ask for a man to take care of a woman, and that's fine if they think that it's necessary. Some of the female caregivers provide care for a man or live in a home where there is a man, right? If there's a couple, and some of the male caregivers provide care for a woman, or live in the home where a woman lives. How does the gender contribute to the caregiving relationship? Although women usually take care of children, adults, parents, spouses, and other family members, there are also men who have these abilities. Women naturally have the ability to care for others with empathy, compassion, concern, and love, but men can also have good caregiving abilities and some men like to take care of their family and work as in the caregiving field. Your caregiving qualities are an asset. Be proud of them. Use your caregiving abilities to provide good quality care. Okay. I just want to, before we continue about uh, gender issues, even more specifically, I want to say this. Um, because this is a different culture, and because it's a different language, sometimes people misunderstand that if they, if you're approached in, inappropriately and you don't respond, okay? People in Israel are very direct, uh, very direct in the way that they may approach you if they're interested in some kind of sexual interaction. And they also expect to be res a response that's very direct and quick. <laughs> Yes or no, usually no, right? If you're approached in this way. But if you hesitate and if you don't respond, they may misinterpret your, you know, your lack of response as a, you know, as agreement or, you know, just take advantage of the situation. So I want you to be very understanding of the fact that um, you must respond accordingly, okay? If you're not interested, you say it very directly. Um, I also want, you know, you must understand that there is, you know, you're going to be in very uh, intimate contact with your care, with the person you're caring for, even if it's a man or a woman, and that ar arouses a lot of, you know, a lot of feelings and a lot of thoughts and a lot of responses, and it is our responsibility as caregivers to respond properly and to say, you know, you're going to be bathing them, touching them in a gentle way, perhaps in an intimate situation, dressing them, speaking to them in a soft, kind, tender voice, and so on. And this could easily be misunderstood, right? It could very, very easily be misunderstood. And so it's very important that you respond directly when thing, if you feel that you're, you know, that you're being misunderstood to say, no, this is not the meaning. I'm kind, I'm gentle, I'm doing my job properly in a nice fashion, it may also provoke a lot of jealousy and anger. Jealousy and anger, perhaps, in the spouse, okay? He's smiling at her. He hasn't smiled at me forever. She's cooking better. She's prettier. She's this, she's that. You, you know, in spite of the fact that the woman might be expecting help and dying from tiredness already, but even so, sometimes, you know, it provokes feelings and the opposite also in men. You know, he's better, he's stronger, he's more active, he's this, he's that. We never know how res people respond to a situation until we're there. And part of our professional understanding of the situation, and it's difficult because the cues are different, right? People respond differently. Perhaps in our own culture, we would pick it up quicker and understand it better. So you must be very sensitive and minded to, you know, to be conscious of all kinds of things that may arise in, in that kind of a situation, especially in the beginning, okay? Might be approached inappropriately. 
People may be angry for no reason that you can understand. So take the time to try to figure it out, okay? And not to respond quickly. When treating a man or being close to a man's patient, sexual harassment may occur. It's important to be aware of it. It is never tolerated, okay? And here are a few tips on this YouTube presentation that you might find helpful, okay? So at your own time, please look at it. Again, I invite you to comment or to share with us experiences that you know perhaps you've encountered do you have any concerns about being a woman or a man caregiver? Do you think caregiving work is easier for men or for women and why? And do you think caregiving um, will be harder or easy for a man or for a woman? Has anyone in the group you know, cared for the opposite sex in the past? And how was it for them? Perhaps you want to share. We all learn from your experiences. Joanna, how was it to care for the man <laughs> in the couple that you cared for? Was it difficult? We go can't ahead, hear you. I, I saw you raise your hand again. Please. Uh, normally, I have been a lot of experience handling uh, male patients, even in Philippines also. I experienced also those young age, like 50 years old. But... They are very good because normally, even they are young, they have like some cases kidney failure. So even you bring them to take a bath, those arousal cannot be work because they are having a kidney failure. So it's just like uh, normal, just bathing, dressing, just like that, it's normal. I haven't encouraged some patient that they have some like rude, you know, they have been uh, misunderstood. So thankful and very thankful because it's still very good, all those male patients that I handled. Okay, so you never had a bad experience or a difficult situation that you couldn't handle? Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, so far, thank God. Okay, but it could happen. And that's why, you know, we're very, we want you to know that it's not, it's not something that uh, is, you know, is tolerated and you do need help in order to know how to deal with it. Okay, yes. you consult yes, the family, you consult the social worker from the agency. And if it's something that is not alleviated, or, you know, if it continues, then you may yes. want to change an employer, which is fine as well. But, yes. you know, first you have to look, find a way to deal with it okay yeah it's like any other difficult situation it's part of you know part of humanity yes sir. thank you thank yes, you sir. thank you joanna is anyone any questions or things they want to share from their experience any of you took care of a family member maybe mom dad Grandpa? Yeah. I can tell you, I like to share. I took care of my grandparents um, one at a time. At first, it was my grandfather. And at some point, it happened that I had to um, help him go to the bathroom when he, was, he wasn't good anymore. And uh, help him help him with shower and at first it was very um, uncomfortable I felt that it was uh, respectful or uh, uh, and it was a bit embarrassing uh, it was hard for me and I'm sure it wasn't easy for him as well so and after that we went with my grandmother later, a few years later, that she had a male caregiver. He was my uh, grandfather caregiver. And after he passed away, he stayed, we made sure he will stay with my grand grandmother. And 
everything to do with the um, showers and bathroom, help her go, go to bed. She didn't feel comfortable with, with him, although he was amazing and very respectful. So every night and uh, sometimes in the morning, I came to help her uh, with the shower and everything. It was better, but I know that I'm assuming that um, it's not for everyone to take care of a male, male uh, patient. It is, um, I'm sure you all professionals and it's with a family member, it's probably different or not. <laughs> um, but if, if you can share, uh, even if it's a family member, I, it will be wonderful if you could share your stories. And what made you come here? Mm -hmm. Anna, thank you for sharing that. I'm sure that was... Uh... <laughs> it was challenging at the time. I was way younger. And you were very young. And you were very young. Okay. Um, I am, and it was about uh, 10, 11 years ago. So you were very Even young. more. <laughs> yeah, I was in, now I'm 35. I was in the, sometime in the early 20s. So okay. it, it's not easy. And I'm sure you're also, all mm. of you, young, young ladies. So I don't know if you try to take care of a male or you're just assuming that it will be fine. <laughs> Sharon and Define. Now I can see your face. <laughs> <laughs> we, spoke, we spoke so many times with your voice. Oh. Um, I can see you raised your hand. Yeah. So thank you for that. And Joanna again. Okay. Normally. Yes. Yeah. Normally, we'll yeah. speak first. <laughs> Divine, Hello. go ahead. Okay. Cool. I have, uh, I encountered okay. two. A uh, male, a patient in uh, in the Philippines only. So mm -hmm. I think there is no problem if you are handling a uh, male. So as lo uh, the the first thing I did is I will ask my my uh, the ha the wife or the daughter or son of 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 my patient. What will I do? And then what his like or dislike? And then I have one patient. He is a very uh, mood swing, uh, uh, easily angry. He always say coarse. He always say uh, not not nice word. But then uh, later on, I, I never respond. I just say I'm sorry. I don't know if I I, I do something, but I never respond. Uh, not nice. I don't do a uh, face. I make face on him, but I said sorry only, and then. I think as, as a caregiver, you should have a huge understanding for the patient. And also, uh, you should have also uh, empathy and also uh, you should put your feet on their shoes so that you will feel what they feel. Especially my patient on that hospital, he, he don't like to take uh, medicine. And then always, if I ask for waiver, because the doctor will say, the doctor or the nurse will say, you have to ask the patient to sign a waiver that he don't he don't like to take his medicine. So every time I ask him, he will shout, shout and shouting and course. And then I, I never say anything but just leave the paper on the table and then remind again him if he like to eat or something or he like the water. He wants to eat. He wants to take his medicine because he needed he need that. Uh, to take that on time but then later in the long run on the long uh, days that we've been together inside the room he wrote a letter for me that I'm sorry divine for being like this or like that maybe I understand maybe I said it's okay sir because I understand maybe 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 he was he was I don't know he was thinking why he was there and then he don't like to be to be inside the room because he was thinking outside because of their family or their his kid so i think as a caregiver you have to be love your patient also your 
you, you, you will be understanding, you'd understanding about your patient. And also for changing clothes, because he is a man, you have to ask first the, uh, what will you do if you want to remove her upper part of her, uh, what's that? A t-shirt and then he want to uh, have a wet or to dump uh, something cloth for his body something like that before I will do something to his body I will ask which part is like that so that we we have a uh, uh, what's that Re I, I want to feel we have a uh, we don't I don't want to feel that I am uh, something I'm thinking not not nice something like that so uh, report to my uh, to my to my patient. I give uh, like this a special uh, something like uh, what's that? Ano pa yung girl? Mm, I want to show to him that uh, I do this because uh, he wants to change his clothes, something like that. So Divine. that's all. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing that. And if I understand correctly. What you try to show him is that you give him some sense of control in the situation. I yes. think, you know, very often people feel so angry about just being so limited in what they can do and losing control and losing control of their life. It's so hard. Really, we, we get so angry with the situation. So first of all, don't think, don't take it personally. And, yeah. and all the power to you for not being there, you know, to, to take on the anger is something specific at you. He was probably just angry at the situation that he is so helpless. Mm. And by asking him about every step of what you're going to do, you're giving him some type of control back. Okay. Does he want yes. the shirt or the pants, the right yeah. sock or the left sock? The yes. right cheek or the left cheek. So you're you're allowing him to have some kind of control in this terrible situation. Good for you. That is being so professional and sensitive and understanding how frustrating it is to be so helpless. It's it it's enraging. Really, it is enraging to be so 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 uh, you know in Thank such you, a Mom. difficult situation. Thank you for sharing that. That's a very yes. important insight into a difficult situation. Sharon, did you want to share something as well? I see you had your hand up and you're yes. waiting patiently. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I want to share also like 11 years ago, I didn't expect to be a caregiver also to my own father, to my own dad. So in the ICU room, he was all that helpless and I was there and it's been three days and I was thinking of... Um, how to change him and how to clean him up. So I saw this uh, other lady on the bed and she was a nurse caring also for, for her grandfather. And it challenged me how, he, uh, how she took care of him. Like he wipes everything. And so I was just looking and I said, maybe I can do that too. Because, um, but I don't have any experience. And it's, it's, I felt like it's, um, I felt shy. And I know that my dad is also a proud man. So uh, it would be like, like, you know, those things. Yeah. But um, uh, he was, uh, of course, he was not uh, conscious at that time. So what I did is that to make it uh, more comfortable for me. And I, even if my dad is unconscious, I know that he still has the feelings. So I, I, I talked to him on his ear and said, I'm going to clean you up and like, uh, like, you know, bathe you. And so I put on my gloves and mask so that um, on touching the private area, he, he wouldn't be feel uncomfortable in it. He would be feel like, um, you know, yeah. So I did that. I just have to be brave and do it. And yeah, after that, it made me feel proud to myself that um, like, you know, uh, Ah, am I funny? Someone's laughing. I'm sorry. So, um, yeah. Um, I'm smiling because that is just so commendable, really. Not laughing, no. Just yeah, smiling okay, at you. you. Yeah. You're, you're warming my heart with your story. Because, really, 
Absolutely. Yes. And so I did that for six months in the ICU room and all the doctors and nurses, the physical therapist um, helped me how to do it, how to lug roll him and everything, how to do the caregiving thing. And so that made me, that challenges me a lot. And yeah, and I just love doing it because seeing um, aside that he's my father, I love him so much. I have to look after him. I have to do all the caring for him. And I just don't trust anyone to do it because I know in myself that I can do it better. And so, yeah, that challenges me. And then my heart went to uh, to those kind of patients because I saw other patients too. And um, I tried helping also in the ward because sometime later we, we were in a ward and we're like, there are three patients in there and there's this policeman who had the biggest bed sore we've ever seen. And he's just so helpless. And sometimes uh, it's too scary to see, but you have to be brave and you have to encourage the patient too, that if you look, at, if you help, you have to put the encouraging smile too. Like, you know, just encouraging smile and thumbs up that it's okay. We're gonna take care of you. Even if they don't understand, they could feel you. They can feel you. And even if they don't feel you, they can still see you. It's what I'm I'm putting in myself. Like, you know, there's they are also person with feelings and they can, yeah, with everything. So after my ma my my dad passed and my so my my mom, my mother again with um, Parkinson's disease, we just learned for four years that she has the Parkinson's disease already. And it's getting worse, so I took care of her too until he was, she was bedridden too. And it's been hard for her because um, her mind uh, has been like, I think sometimes uh, she's losing it, but it's been too hard for, for everyone, but we have to be very patient, the tolerance. And sometimes you get angry by yourself because she's your mom, you want the best for her, but sometimes she don't like it. She don't like to accept the things. So we just had to be patient. And that's why um, when I, uh, that's, that's my patient now, like she also has the Parkinson's and I was uh, chosen by her because I had the experience of looking after a Parkinson's person. And I think I understand more of that case because um, yeah, you just had to be very careful of them. We just need to let them feel that we are here to support them and that oh, we love them and we care for them. So um, yes, yesterday, it's my first, I, I, I started my duty two days ago and just yesterday she asked me to bathe her and I just get so excited to help her out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it makes me feel excited. <laughs> so um, yeah. Karen, to... you're amazing. You're absolutely yeah. amazing. Yes, so, it's, an yeah. Act, they... it's an act of love and um, yeah. And yeah. not everyone can do that. You know that you're yeah. special. We're all special because not yeah. everyone can do that. We know that so many people cannot. And, mm. um, and yeah, it's, um, it's a calling. I always feel that it's a calling. And you don't know Thank that you. it's your calling until you experience it. And yeah. you find, you know, and you feel rewarded for being able to, to do something that's very, very meaningful for someone. And it may seem small to others, but it's not something small. Definitely not. Yeah. So, you know, all right. Yeah, Go ahead, Sharon. Thank you. To the way I see it, uh, Sharon, it's amazing. And you really moved me. Uh, <laughs> and that is crying. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Sarah. Okay. No, because yeah. I wanted to say something. Go ahead. To me, when you said that yesterday, she told she asked you to bathe her. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking like she gave you permission yes, to come right. closer. She she trusts you. Yeah, it's beautiful. And exactly. I'm, I'm so glad of that too, and I'm so glad of big help to her. So yeah, I like it. I'm thankful. We're, we have an important job, and not everyone can do it. So really. Only people that are, you know, have a special place in their heart. I think, yeah, you don't know it until you're there and you understand it for yourself. All right. Well, I'm very happy you're coming here to help us deal with our issues. And you left your mom at home and your family. And that's very brave of you. Okay. Thank you. Ta-da.
Tenorio. All right, girls, we're going to take a gentleman's, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take Joanna. a very, oh, Joanna, Joanna wants to say something yeah. else, you have your hand up, I'm going to say yeah. we'll take a five minute break, but we'll after wait, Joanna. go ahead, after yeah. Joanna, go ahead. Oh, anyway, uh, based on my experience, uh, I already adjusted myself, uh, the only first thing I have learned is to treat them, our patient, as our family, as our parents or our loved ones. Give your heart to them. Show them that you also care for them. Uh, we are there for them to help them to develop mentally, physically, emotionally. So as a caregiver, I have learned that I give all my best for them. And I give all my love. So that's why when my patients recovered very well, I'm so happy and I'm very proud of myself. So as a caregiver, it's very feel good that you help anyone, not only our family, but especially those people who need our, our help. So we okay. just keep on mind that we must be patient, be cheerful, treat them with love. So that's only I have learned. Can't my top that. Can't top that, Joanne. Absolutely. To be able to do that for family is sometimes easier, and for strangers, strange countries, strange culture, sometimes it's a lot harder. Sometimes it's easier. But mostly, yes. I think it's harder. And you've had it's that harder. experience in China. And yeah, okay. It's harder for the beginning. But when time comes that you've been close to the family, to your patients, you're getting to know each other. At the end, you will be like just a friend, very often and very close to each other. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to take a five minute break and then we're going to talk about some other important things. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anath, are you with us? Yes, I'm here with Good. you. Good. So we will continue. An intercultural encounter. Okay. Well, Hebrew and Israel may be as foreign as Chinese. And, um, and Chinese culture. So yeah, we have to be minded that uh, we're in a different place with different, with different everything. Okay, intercultural differences are differences in traditions, food, norms, beliefs, values, which vary between nations, people, ethnic group, Speakers of different languages, every culture has its own ways of expressing itself. Every culture has <clears throat> its own ways of defining conflict, passing messages. <clears throat> Why is this here? One minute, guys, one minute. And um, beside the presentation, we can't see anything else. Okay. Something here is okay. It will be fine in a minute. Something moved here on my screen. There we go. Okay. Every culture has its own ways of expressing emotions and to talk about emotions. That's for sure. Um, we must be minded that, you know, different people on an individual basis have different ways of showing gratitude or anger or whatever. So it's not just about culture, but it definitely is related to culture, okay? So we have to take the time and be very patient to get to know the people that we're working for as individuals, okay? And also we have to be minded the fact that everybody has stereotypical feelings and ideas about, okay? We all have feelings about old people and about Israelis and about Jewish people and about you know, Christians and Filipinos and young people and old people. 
And, you know, we all have kind of stereotypes in our brain and we have to kind of get past it to get to know the people that we're working with because we want to make their life better. This is our work, right? And how to adjust to a new culture. Be patient and give yourself time. It's important that you keep your culture and customs and traditions if you want to keep them. A few tips about adjusting to a new culture you may find in this YouTube presentation that you're invited to, to uh, watch at a different time. Again, I invite you, have you heard anything about Israelis, about Hebrew, about our culture, about our food, about our kitchen, about anything? Do you have any concerns about adjusting to Israeli culture? Do you have any questions about Israeli culture? You're welcome to ask and, you know, share. This is the time to do it. Anyone have anything they want to say about food? You know, I just want to say that, you know, most Jewish homes do have uh, dietary laws that you may already know about and traditions and everybody everybody uh, behaves differently okay there's no one rule for everyone so be very minded to be very patient write things down you know how they do things where they do things don't be offended if they tell you not to put your food in this place on that place to eat in your own room it's you know it's very sensitive and it takes time to learn how people, you know, deal with different issues and um, Shabbat and holidays and food and dietary laws and all of those things. Anyone have any one, anything they want to share or ask, please do. Go ahead, Sharon. I can't hear you. Turn your mic up. Sorry, it's me again. It's my yeah. first time to attend the Shabbat last Friday. And um, I don't know what to do, but they invited me on their table and dine with them. So I joined them. And after that, um, they, they asked me a little things about uh, me and my place in the Philippines. And after that, they were talking by themselves and I'm finished with my food. And I don't know if it's because oh, in the Philippines, you can you can ask to get up if you're done. But I don't know if that would offend them or if I get up off on the table already and just do my other chores in the kitchen. So I asked I ask our the father if I can get up and he said yes, that's okay. But is that really okay? I don't know if they're just um, making me feel better to just say okay because I really don't. I didn't. I didn't read the culture, and then yeah. And today is my day off. You said eating in the room. They allowed. Uh, they uh, they allowed me to get food in the kitchen, but I'm not comfortable eating alone in the kitchen on my because they were asleep and I don't like making any moves on the kitchen. So I got. I took. I got my food and went to my room you think that's okay I'm, I'm not sure though i have we haven't spoken today yet about it i know maybe they saw me so they keep a kosher kitchen um no but they said uh, they don't want fish and other uh, like pork in the house okay okay so you know it's I can't tell you what's okay. You ask me if it's okay, but then you, that you have to ask them. You, you know, um, it's very nice that they asked you to join them for dinner. Was there other people? It's just a husband and wife. They're a couple. Um, with uh, the family came, the, the grandchildren and the one daughter. Mm -hmm. so, so you met the family. Had, okay. Yes. Okay. So you're slowly learning what, you know, what's expected, what isn't. Make a list of all your questions and ask them. I think that's really the best way to do it. So you don't forget. And, um, you know, over the day, you're going to have more and more questions. <laughs> yeah. So the best thing is just to ask them. You know, okay. it's very... It's, you're, it's very nice that you're sensitive to all of those little things because, you know, what they expect is, is 
you, how can you guess, right? They're not going to tell you every minute of the day what you should do. They tell you in general yeah. and the rest of it, you know, ask them if it's your day off, do they expect you to stay in your room? Can you go outside and come back and, you know, like 10 hours later, um, you know, can you sit in the garden in the, in the patio, whatever? Can you watch TV in the living room? Do they want you to do it in your own room? All, you know, just little things because you're living with them. So yeah. you have to kind of ask and, you know, it, it is uncomfortable in one sense. You want to feel at home. It is your home. On the other hand, you're still a stranger. So, mm, yeah. It, so yeah, a ask, ask. Okay. And eventually yeah. you'll, you know, you'll know what the answer is, but you can't really know un until it time passes. Absolutely. Okay. Where yeah. are you situated in Israel? Where, where are you now? I'm here in Hod HaSharon, Mom. Hod HaSharon. Oh, that's a really yeah. nice area. So maybe if you're day off and you're not expected to work, go out. Beautiful weather. Go out for several hours. Walk around. See what's in the area. Ask them, you know. Yeah. What's open, They're what's nice. closed? They're nice. He drove me to the isolation facility and get uh, the thing that I forgot. And then he drove me around the neighborhood because I asked, uh, if, is it okay to walk around the neighborhood as the exercise? And he said, yes. And they have two parks near here. So it's good. They're and there's all, probably a nice. shopping area. Yeah, it's a very yeah. nice area. Mm -hmm. Very yes, nice. Oh, good. I'm happy. For you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, they're so nice too. Thank you. It'll be fine. It'll be very nice. Okay, good. Anyone else have questions or things they want to share about what happened or what's going to happen? Yes, Joanna. Go ahead. And your yeah. mic, your mic is is off. Turn it on. Okay. Go along. Oh, anyway. <laughs> uh, for me, yeah. Uh, Normally, the culture here is not really a big adjustment for me because there's a similarities for those Arab people that have been worked before. I like their foods. When it comes to food, I love it. Oh, good. <laughs> Arab oh, food. I love it. Actually, the... Um, one of my colleagues here, they are asking about uh, about the religious. So is they want to know how to I mean to commun ba, to communicate or how to how strict they are when it comes to working together. What are those uh, must be bear on mind that we should not do this, we should not do that. That's they asking, is it easy to deal with to those religious people? You know, it's so hard to answer that kind of a question because it's a generalization. And you know, as how many types of Christians are there? So many different kinds, right? I mean, you know, all over the world. And if you ask how many types of Jewish people are there, just the same. So it's very difficult. You know, every family and, and every person on, on, you know, this makes it, there's so many rules. I, it's impossible to, you know, to abide by all of them. So you kind of pick and choose what's important to you in terms of being a religious person, right? Sometimes yeah. we think, oh, how can he do that if he calls himself a religious person, you know, but that happens in all religions. So, I mean, it, it's just a matter of, of getting to know the specific family. And again, I say, ask, ask all the questions. You know, your, 
it's our responsibility as caregivers to know and there it's not their responsibility to tell us unless we ask so to them it may seem obvious oh how did she not know this well she doesn't know anything right so you have to ask if you know and um and write it down so you know so many things to remember so write it down and uh yeah and eventually you'll do it right um there's no really, I can't tell you what's right for one family may wrong, be wrong for a different one, you know? Um, very hard to tell. Um, I was asked by one of the, um, in terms of touching people, you know, I was, I was asked by one of, the, uh, one of the caregivers about caring for, um, he was asked to come to care for a woman. And so he asked, is that strange? It isn't strange, you know, sometimes if, 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 you know, we also have, um, how should we say it, preconceived ideas and stereotypes about foreign workers, Filipino workers, that they're these tiny little thin girls. Um, and so if you order a girl, you know, to come help for you, then, and you're, and you have a big person to care for, then maybe you would ask for a man, you know, so it's really difficult to know what people expect until until you're there and you meet them and you know what the situation is like, etc. Where is the family living that you're going to be caring for, Joanna? Uh, I'm going to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Okay. Yeah. So good chance that there are religious people. <laughs> mm -hmm. I lived there for 40 years of my life. <laughs> and, uh, and it's a wonderful place to be a wonderful it's going yes. to be very very exciting jerusalem is an incredible place we like to think of it as the navel of the world you know the center of all the three major religions uh, christianity islam and uh, and judaism and yeah. yeah spiritualism is in the air <laughs> <laughs> Now, Joanna, right. did you like to add anything else? Because I saw you raise your hand again. I know. No more. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to share or ask something? Just that you know that in terms of Israel in general, on Friday, afternoon usually friday is a short day friday afternoon most businesses are closed right and tr public transportation as well in most major cities and um, again they resume after a sunset on saturday and sunday is a regular business day but friday is a short half day You're going to be spending Christmas this year in Israel. How exciting. It, it might not be that exciting <laughs> being in Israel on Christmas. It depends where, but we don't celebrate. No, we don't. Uh, but yeah, but if you ask for the day off and you go to, you know, to a church and there's churches everywhere. You can plan ahead and have a special kind of a, uh, yeah. There special is, a, oh, sorry. Go ahead. There's a special, um, for many years, I used to go on uh, December 24th at, at midnight. There is the um, special uh, mass. Yes, yeah, special mass. Um, in Jerusalem, there is a place when they're open to everyone. And it was pretty amazing. I recommend. There are there are many 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 special churches in Tel Aviv, Yafo, Haifa, Jerusalem, yeah. obviously, other places as well. Yeah, plan ahead. <laughs> yeah. It will be it will be special. I think that, you know, you're entitled to have your holidays as off days as well. So, yeah, you can ask. Yeah. You can ask and plan ahead. Anyone else have questions or things they want to comment about? If not, 
we will meet again tomorrow. Um, tomorrow at, at three. nine? At oh, no, three. Oh, at three. That's Isn't right. It? Sorry. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Tomorrow at three. And hopefully most everyone can make it. And if not, um, you can see the send. recorded, yes. right, the recorded message. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone. And I welcome your questions and comments. More interesting you, to hear about your experiences <laughs> for everyone, not just for us. Okay. Thank so you, thank everyone. You. Right. Thank you for sharing. Thank Have you. a nice Bye. evening. Good. Good Good Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, cantahana. <laughs> <laughs>